Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Ride 5 career mode and today we're here to do the Eurostock Sport Bike 600 Cup. So it seems to be a full event championship. We've got Brands Hatch, Ricardo Tormer, of course, is Valencia, Monza and Al Mira. And of course, in the last episode, if you didn't see that one, we did the two stroke 250 championship, which actually gave us a 600 Honda that we can use for these next events. Now, probably the most important thing that we do need to do first is actually go and upgrade our bike because in the last championship, I didn't have enough money and just didn't think to do it. And unfortunately, that definitely that definitely bit us a bit because the AI definitely had better bikes than us. So what we need to do here is we've got our Honda, the beautiful Honda that we did unlock in the last one, and we need to go through and upgrade it. So I've upgraded the bike as much as I can, but unfortunately we've not been able to put any slick tires on it. So we're having to use the stock tires. I've got every other upgrade on, but unfortunately if I put the slick tires on, it puts it above the PP limit. So the bike is actually illegal. And I don't think there's really any upgrades I could take off to bring it back below. So unfortunately we are going to have to use the stock tires for this championship. But without any further ado, let's get into the first race at Brands Hatch Indy. So here we are then on the grid for this first race at Brands Hatch. What can we do? It is another circuit that we do know again, so that does help us out quite a bit. And lights out, and away we go. And the start has been pretty good there. I mean, we've probably got more upgrades than a lot of these AI bikes, you see. Charles Nolan in the lead, so once again our rival, and his name does seem to be red, so it does seem like he is our rival for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but apparently he is. As we go into Druids, with four wide going to Druids, that's just asking for disaster. But unfortunately, I backed out of that and got overtaken by half the grid. So... Maybe I should be a bit more aggressive. I was just trying to avoid an accident, and uh, it's kind of bit me a little bit there. And we've sent that guy off, so I do apologise for that one. We're up into P7 now. Henrik Werther in front of us. We've got somebody else with a red name as well. So maybe we've got more than one rival in this championship now. I don't really know. I don't really know what the red name signifies, if I'm quite honest. I assume it is some sort of rival, but quite why. I know it did say when I started the career mode that you have to watch out for certain people. Maybe that's what it is. They're supposed to be going up the ranks with us. We'll have to see. And we're being overtaken through Pada Kill by a Kawasaki there up the inside. We try and get back up the inside. Back up into P7 once again. Seems like the AI in front of us though are a decent bit quicker. And we're being really attacked behind by Flynn Taylor, who doesn't look like he's got a very upgraded bike. He's still got the uh, plates and mirrors on, but. Maybe they've just left those on. It is the AI after all. I mean, maybe some people prefer the look as well. Maybe they'd want the performance parts without, but I feel like once you've sort of made a bit more of a race-style bike, you may as well go all the way with it. We've got a good run on also on Henrik Werther. Here we go, flying past him up into P6. We're close up to the rider in P5, who is a rival of ours, but unfortunately we kind of messed up that corner. And here we go into clearways, or clock curve, that is, I guess. I don't really know the indie layout name. I thought this was just clear where it's the last corner, but can we beat him to the line? He's leaning on us. We're trying to push him a bit wide, but I think he might just have us there. He had the slipstream. That helped him out. And yes, unfortunately, we did finish seventh place in that one. Although our lap times are pretty representative, in fairness. And our two rivals are only a couple of spots ahead of us with actually worse bikes. We actually do have better bikes than them. And it seems like pretty much everyone was on stock tyres except the top th top three who were on the uh, the softer tyres. I mean, I'm not being funny, right? But how is an R6 from 2019 in the same category as a CBR600 from 2009? Ten years apart, the bikes. They also have slick tyres on and we have stock tyres on. How is that bike legal? <laughs> that seems a bit unfair to me. So next up then, we've got a race at Valencia, of course, where we had our best result in the last championship. So hopefully we could try and replicate it. So here we are then. What can we do? from this mid-grid position. Hopefully, we get a good start. We're within a chance of a win here, but lights out and away we go. It's been a pretty decent launch off the line. Hopefully, we could try and get onto the podium at the very least, but they run wide at this corner like they did in the previous championship. We might have a chance. We've been dive-bombed in there. We've been pushed a bit wide. The AI haven't run off the track themselves this time, but they did still push me wide, so it's put me down to sixth place, and we're trying to get the inside. We've been turned in on like I'm not there. We've got Suzuki rider up the inside of us again now then. So it's Ellis Mercer, that is, that's gone past us there. We've got another rider on the inside, Gal Dupont, I believe. It's very, uh, it's always interesting to see the names that are in here. I believe they are, like, real people that might work at Milestone or something. Some of them are, at least. I think some of them are probably just generated names, like, to sound like they're from the country. Look the inside of Ellis we go. We've run a bit wide, though, there. It's a bit of a misjudged 
attempt at an overtaken on the green, although we haven't actually got a warning for that one, which is strange, or a penalty anyway, you just get an instant penalty, don't you, in this, it's no long lap or anything, you just get a time penalty added on, like you did in the old school MotoGP games, and I feel like we might have lost our chance to win already, Charles Nolan seems to be pulling away in this one, so unlike in Brands Hatch, he seems to be performing pretty well here. Out of the last corner, then we can get a bit of slipstream on Ellis. It seems like the AI just have an inherent straight line speed advantage because I've got the engine upgraded to the maximum, so there's no way they should be out driving me. Maybe if they're on the uh, the race tyres, but I couldn't put the race tyres on because it made the bike illegal. And I've cut the first corner a little bit there, and we've gone on the green in the first corner, so pretty poor first corner, I must say. And we're going around the outside now into doing corner. We had to risk a lot on the front there, and we actually kind of did it. And we're going to drive right all the way around the outside of Ellis. Not quite on this occasion, though. We're going to have to settle just behind him. And here we got the inside of him. Out of turf four. So we're up onto the podium now, then. So next up is Arta Nunes Fontana. And then Charles Nolan. But I think Charles Nolan is just a bit too far up the road for us to catch him. Obviously, this was the guy that won here last time at Valencia. So I guess he's a bit of a Valencia specialist. But look, the inside we go. Oh, not quite. I, I committed to it, but to be fair, he pulled that one off, and oh, we committed to that as well. It didn't quite work, but it's cost us another spot. Just could try to get the run through the last corner. Take advantage of Ellis side by side with him. Although we know he's got more top end than me, because it happened on the last lap as well. It looks like Arta just hasn't got the top end. And I'm using the slip of Ellis. Can I try and go between the two of them as we go down towards turn one? We're going to be deep on the brakes here. Oh, I've risked a lot there. We've turned in probably a bit too early still, but we kept it on the track. We've gone onto the green though again on the exit, so... Yeah, we've not been doing turn one too well, and we've dropped back into fourth again, so still not on the podium. And, oh, Ellis has been sat but Arthur's got a bad exit. We've got it on the inside. So we're up into P2 now, then. Can we beat him to turn four? Yes, we can. So we're up into second place, but Charles Nolan is just too far away. I must say, I'd like to have a word with whoever's drawing the grids for these because it puts Charles Nolan on pole. It puts me right in the mid pack, which makes it very, very difficult. So, all towards the line then. It's another second place here at Valencia. Although, in my opinion, we should have had some sort of penalty for going on the green through the first couple of corners. And to be fair, 1 2 here were on street tyres. Ellis Mercer was on street tyres as well. So, Fair enough, fair enough, that actually kind of shows that the tyre delta's not that different, but I feel like if I had a set of slicks like some of these guys, I could probably do more with it. But you did see that Fontana, who was on the softs, was still on the straight, so potentially he had to sacrifice an engine upgrade for the, uh, the straight line speed there. He got out the corners very well, but he did seem to lose out quite a bit. But to be fair, Charles Nolan had the quickest lap of the race, so even if we'd started up there with him, I guess he probably would have beaten us anyway. So actually I was expecting a championship standings to sort of come up like it did in the last one, but actually this time it's not a championship, is it? It is just a series of events and we just get points based on where we finish in the event. So you get like a certain amount of leaderboard points finishing second. So what we need is 145 to actually pass this, which is looking a bit sketchy considering we've only got 53 in the first two. So we definitely need to do a bit better than seventh and second in these other events. But this time we've actually got a time trial at Monza. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. So a trial like this will be where we're thankful that we got the engine upgrades rather than the slick tyres, although I suppose some of the fast corners will be uh, probably better on a set of slicks. So what we need to do then is at least a 2 minute 3.0. You can see there's a big delta between these different lap times. So I would imagine that we're looking to try and do a 1 minute 55. That's my aim. I want to try and get the goal because I feel like without the AI in the way, I don't really have much of an excuse to not be quick enough. So we've got to be careful of the chicane. I've broke probably way too early for it, to be quite honest. Uh, we, what chicane are we even going on? Uh, we've invalidated. Right, let's, uh, let's give that one a go again then. It's one of those things where I wasn't sure which chicane we should be using because obviously there's multiple versions of the different chicanes here at Monza and for some reason the frame rate has just sort of taken a bit of a tank. It seems like this track, it's probably maybe the nighttime setting, the, the evening setting is a bit more intensive, but it just it's absolutely tanked. It was fine a minute ago and that's fine again now. Just... Very weird bit of a frame drop there. I do apologise. I'm looking to get a new PC soon, so hopefully we should be able to stop these from happening, because I know they have been happening in videos quite a lot lately. Uh, obviously the 2023 milestone games are a little bit more intensive than the previous ones. Well, considering how poor the brakes were earlier, I'm surprised to managed to get stopped there, but we've done the right chicane on this attempt, so... That's already an improvement. Loretta Filio, I believe it's called. Through Curva Grande, or Curva Biasiano. I'm sure that's Curva Grande. But I could be wrong. Alright, so coming up towards the two Lesmos, I definitely know the name of these corners. 
Got to be careful, we've run in way too hot for the first one. See, the brakes seemed really good at the end of the, the start finish straight, but then when you get to sort of more medium speed corners, I feel like maybe it's the turn in that lets it down. Probably what it is, because I'm expecting it to sort of roll through the corner more. I guess I keep forgetting that we're on stock tyres and that, uh, that's probably why I'm struggling a bit. Just the last corner to go. Hopefully, we can get a decent time. I'm hoping it's gold after all this, but. You never know, as we go into the final turn, it's going to be 1 minute 40, so we've got 15 seconds to get to the line. I'm liking my chances, to be fair. Well, I suppose we can't go as fast as the last corner as the F1 cars can, so it's where most of my Monza experience will come from. So, up towards the line, that's not the right line, that would be why. And it's not going to be 1 minute 55, 1. It is going to be the silver time, though. We are going to manage to beat that 1 minute 57. Yes, yeah, so we did a 56.5, so a little bit off that top time, but to be fair... I did pretty well on that one, so I'm not too annoyed. I'll tell you what, this championship's hard because we've not even got nearly enough points. We need 145 points to clear it, but we've only got 68, so it's going to be pretty difficult. I don't think we're going to unlock this Suzuki, unfortunately, at the end of it. Even though we've actually been very strong, two second places, the seventh is a bit of a, you know, a bit of a poor result. But I would have said that'd be enough. But fair enough, I guess you've got to win. Every, I probably have to win every event you see to get enough points for that. It's probably a bit more difficult. But either way, then, we've got the last race here of this championship at Almira. A track that, yes, I've played before, but not for a very long time. So it'll be interesting to see how we get on, because I think we might struggle a little bit. So here we are, then, down on the grid at Almira. Lots of riders for a grid spot here. We've got four per row. So I think we're in, what, P9 for this one, then? Lights out, and away we go. That was the first call. We had a pretty good run, because we actually had a very good position on the grid there. To be on the outside... And we've actually got into P4 immediately. We had a bit of contact with a the rider there. And we're going to actually take advantage of that. So I do apologise. Didn't mean to uh, have contact with them. But Almira certainly changed since it was last since I last played it. I'm pretty sure I played it on Ride 2. It was like the last time I played it. So it's been a long, long time. And this is where I find out that Almira's not even in that game or something. But I'm pretty certain it was Almira that we played before. I'm sure the curbs were sort of a different colour. I'm sure they were more like yellow uh, than the colour that they are now. Which is obviously something that's very easy to change, but we're in P3 currently, and it is a three lapper. We're a bit wide here, that might allow someone through. It's going to be one of those circuits where I think it's relatively difficult to overtake. It's a bit one line, and this was 100% the track I played back on Ride 2 because I had this weird chicane in it. And we've made a pass there, he's cut the corner. We've got a penalty actually for cutting the corner. I don't know when I actually cut the corner, but fair enough, we've got a two tenths penalty. We've kind of bashed our way through up the inside of Gal Dupont, but I mean, he cut a corner really to overtake me, so I'm not feeling too bad about it. And can we get a slip stream off of Owen Brown? Down towards the tight right. I don't think so. He's got a bit more, seems to have a bit more top end than me. But on the brakes, we do close up quite a bit to him. We're looking for a way through. Yeah, it's definitely changed a lot because that was really flat, I remember, uh, on ride two. I don't know if this was in ride three or four, to be quite honest with you. Probably was, but I've not certainly played it since ride two. Never got that far into the uh, the career mode of the other ones, to be fair. Oh, and that's, I thought it was going to be more of a penalty, but actually it wasn't, to be fair. He's wide, on the inside. Taking the lead from Owen Brown here on lap two of three. The problem is I've now got to find my own way around the circuit, which is alright, because I have done a lap, but and obviously I do remember the layout vaguely in my head, but obviously that doesn't really help for breaking points, uh, particularly a vague memory of the layout that probably wasn't very accurate back then. <laughs> Obviously on the old engine. Seems to be getting on okay, actually. And we're pulling the gap out, so... It's weird, that. Like, again, you would think I'd be better at the tracks that I know quite well, like Brands Hatch and... Obviously Valencia. I mean, Brands Hatch, to be fair, the, the British ones are difficult because they put you in, like, P10. They give you a very short circuit because they use a ridiculously short layout so that I don't really understand why they exist. And it's a very narrow circuit, so Brands Hatch Indy, for example, it was virtually impossible to make any progress in three laps because it's just such a narrow circuit. It's hard enough to make passes on Brands Hatch GP, let alone Indy. Whereas, I mean, this isn't exactly the widest circuit, but this it's quite flowing, and there's definitely places to make a pass, as we saw. And we took the lead at the beginning of the last lap, and we're still leading now, so it seems like we don't need the guys in front of us at all. In fact, they probably held us back because we're about a second of the lead. Our first win in this whole career mode here could come at Almira. The one where, to be honest, I thought looking at the championship was the one I'd probably do the worst at. So here we are, there, through the last corner, we're over two seconds of the lead now, an absolute domination here at Almira to take our first win in Ride 5 career mode. And I'll tell you why that happened, look at all the riders around us. 
They're all on stock tyres. And I think some of the better AI that we've been racing against and some of the other ones weren't in here. It's fair. Ellis Mercer, I'm surprised he was so far down there. He was pretty rapid in the other one. But yeah, some of the some of the rivals that we've had are not in this race. So I think that's possibly why we've ended up having that one be quite easy. But I'm pretty happy with that one. A 1 minute 39.9 as well. Massively quicker than the AI. And I haven't changed the settings. It just shows perhaps they're a bit slower at this circuit. So 40 points there for that one. And 9,000 credits as well. That's where the big credits are. They're from the big positions. That got us all the upgrades for the Honda. That 21,000 we had before. So we could upgrade another bike completely with the amount of credits that we've got now. But there you go then. That is the Euro Stock Sport Bike 600 Cup complete then. Obviously we've not managed to get enough points to get the Suzuki. But the next event is unlocked. If we actually go back to the menu. You can see that there is a there is a head-to-head -head that is unlocked. So clearly we did enough to sort of progress past that. Just not enough unfortunately to unlock the Suzuki but again something we could come back to later if necessary especially if we're struggling or maybe we need to go back and get wins at some point I know that the previous game was a bit like that you needed a certain amount of wins at a certain point so you had to go back and do events you hadn't won previously and try and win them so maybe that's something we'll have to do in the future but hopefully you guys have enjoyed that one but if you are new to the channel please do like and subscribe it really does help me out and you get plenty more Ride 5, Moto GP23, GP Bytes content in your subscription feed so if you do like bike racing games, this is certainly the place to be. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you're staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.